Time signatures. Do they know things? What do they know? What are they? Are they useful? What do we use them for? Let's find out. But first, a word from our sponsors at Highlander Knives. Are you looking for the right gift for your significant other this holiday season? Why don't you go over to HighlanderShop.com and browse the amazing selection of knives, swords, and just all kinds of different blades that your loved one will truly appreciate this holiday season. Remember to use promo code COB in all caps to get 10% off of your online purchase. That's promo code COB, all caps, for 10% off. Our first time signature, one, or one whole beat, usually indicated in music as one one, a whole note, a whole entire note with a fermata at the top in written music, and the band leader or the conductor usually cues you, and you just hold that note out forever, like this. <laughs> play until they cut it off. Now 2-2, two, two, or cut time as it's commonly known, not to be confused with common time, which is 4-4, four, four, which is essentially the same thing, is just counted in two, and it's usually this kind of feel. One and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a... In jazz, or polka, punk rock, one and two. It's easier to count in two. One, two, one, two, than to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's why something would be written in cut time. Now, three, four, also known as a waltz, in its most basic form. jazz waltz in there for you. Now that brings us to 4-4. Four, four. Everybody in the world's heard this beat. And that's 4-4. Four, four. Brings us to common time. The, the type of music that's in everything from pop to rock and the list goes on and on and on and on. Now let's get into our first odd time signature, 5-4. Usually this is like the most common 5-4 beat that you've ever heard, and it's Dave Rubrecht's Take 5, and the drummer on this track is Joe Morello. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One. Awesome. Six, eight. Sounds something like that. That also could be confused with 12, eight. The snare usually falls on beat four of each musical phrase that the drums are doing. Now that brings us to seven, one of my favorites. And the demonstration for this we're going to do is Rush's limelight and what's neat about this beat is it's mimicking a 16th note disco pattern but we're going a measure of 4-4 four, four, and a measure of 3-4 and it's going to sound something like this <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so on and so forth. And that's just one section of that song. So even if you can't count in odd time signatures, whether they're subdivided or just stretched out the way I just demonstrated, if you can hear the melody in your head while you're playing it, that's going to help you out a ton. Just just a little bit of advice for you if you're trying to play any of these. That brings us to 8-8, eight, eight, 
which is essentially 4-4. Four, four. And... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you find a beat that is in 8-8 eight, eight, that's just easier to count in 8-8, eight, eight, or you have some sort of argument that it's easier to notate something in 8-8 eight, eight, or feel something in 8-8 eight, eight versus 4-4, four, four, then please leave a comment. Otherwise, 8-8 eight, eight is essentially just... 4-4, four, four. and the easiest way to play it, feel it, count it, whatever you want to do, is in 4-4. Four, 9-8, four. and the example that we're going to use for you today is Led Zeppelin's The Crunch, drummer John Bonham, and the drummer of the beat that was used in the 7th was Rush's Neil Peart, R.I.P., love you Neil, love you John Bonham. Now if we take a look at the music for The Crunch, you'll notice that it starts on a pickup which is technically beat five of the 9-8 measure. So that's gonna sound something like this. So that can be kind of confusing when you're listening to it. You're like, oh, where is the one? And it isn't really until the band comes in that you can hear it. So I'm gonna play what that sounds like for you just starting on beat one of the actual phrasing. And that's that feel. And so there's nine. Our example in ten is in ten four. It's a song by Nine Inch Nails called Just Like You Imagine. I'm gonna count to ten. Please count with me and please continue to count to ten because I just can't do it out loud and play the speed. It's really, really difficult. So with your help, please join along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This next song is considered to be in eleven. If it was in eleven, it would be eleven two. It's Outcasts. Hey ya. Hey ya, hey ya, so on and so forth. And the beat goes a little bit something like this. That phrase could be considered to be in 11-2, if we want to count the half notes, I should say. Hey, ya. Hey, ya. Yeah, if you just want to count it in quarter notes, then you have three measures of 4-4, four, four, a measure of 2-4, and two measures of 4-4. Four, four. And it's just all about how you want to count it. Usually you're just going to count it in 4-4, four, four, and you're just going to know where that beat of 2-4 is. There is your 11. Uh, Outcast, Odd Time Signature, Geniuses, probably. And that brings us to the number 12, which is actually a common time signature in music because 12, 8 is really just 4, 4 subdivided. And I'm going to demonstrate that with one of my most favorite beats by one of my most favorite drummers, somebody that I actually got to study with, Mr. Bernard Pretty Purdy, the world's most recorded drummer. And the beat is the Purdy Shuffle. And we can count that in four if we go a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Because we're not going to count that in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're not going to count it like that. We're going to count it in four. We're going to feel it in four. But it's usually written in 12-8. And there's other examples, like the 6-8 beat, 
that also said it's like is it six eight or is it twelve eight? It just depends on the music that you're playing or the phrasing of the drumming and all of it. There's a great video on thirteen sixteen. If you just type that into YouTube, you can find a really good example. But I'm basically stealing that information and telling you that it's just two quarters, which is eight sixteenth notes, and a bar of five sixteenths, which you can subdivide from there. And so what that sounds like is one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. And you have something like this. But let's make it groovy. And there you have it. I just played in 1316 for you. Wow. Mind blowing. And for our final example, we're going to play something in 148, as demonstrated by the song Whiplash from the movie Whiplash. If you look very closely at the sheet music in the film, it even says that this is in 148, at least this version of the song. And it sounds a little bit something like this. I hope you liked our demonstration of different time signatures today. I hope you got something out of it, whether you are an inexperienced drummer or an experienced drummer. I hope I gave you a new perspective on approaching time signatures or just knowing about them. If you would like more music demystified by the Time Wizard, then please subscribe, give this video a like, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day and make sure to wash your hands.